guys what's up we're back today uh, i'm not working on the car i'm actually just doing some wiring on a, on a wave runner trailer but it's the same basic principles for a car it's just dc voltage 12 volts um this is actually a little bit probably better of an area to check how good your wiring is because salt salt water is more brutal than, than anything you're going to encounter pretty much in a race car you know maybe not as much well probably just as much rattling on a boat but um I'm really, really like crazy anal about wiring stuff just because I don't like to see wiring fail. Um, when I make connections, I do them. I kind of take a couple extra steps. I solder everything. I don't use connectors. I don't use butt connectors. I'm not into them. Uh, I don't think they look good. And a lot of times you run into issues with them. Uh, I also don't use conduit, that black stuff that everybody puts uh, wires in because it just kind of holds water and holds shit in there. Uh, I'm a big fan of solder. Use a good three to one heat shrink that shrinks down really good. I also put dielectric grease in the connection before I heat shrink it. Then I wrap it in tape, and then I'll wrap all the wires together in tape. It kind of seals it off pretty good. I used to do a lot of work on salt trucks, and that's one of the thing we, things we always dealt with. Even trucks that were brand new and a year old, all of a sudden, all the wiring in the back of the truck is rotted apart and broken because that's how a lot of these uh, aftermarket bodies are put on the trucks. So here we go. Right, what I'm doing on this is this is a five-wire plug. I only need four. Uh, I don't need an auxiliary power, so I'm going to take this to run down the second side of the trailer to power the tail lights um you can just jump it from side to side so it's going to be the same connection but because i have an open rail in the trailer i want to run it down both sides uh we'll get into two ways you can always get wired on the trailer if you have old existing wire there obviously tie it to it pull it through if you don't if you're in like a piece of two if you're doing work on like a motorcycle frame or something like that grab small string and and just blow air through it and let the string go it'll come out the other end it's a really easy way then just tie your wire to it and pull it through so that's a little uh Little trick of the trade, I actually learned that from Roger Burgett, who's a custom bike builder years ago. So here I'm gonna cut off both of these up at the top because we're gonna tie these together. So I'll leave yourself a little bit of wire. Give yourself a decent amount stripped. Maybe even a little more because we're putting two wires to it. Okay. Open it up real good. And grab your other two ends, which I just dropped on the floor. All right, so we got one end. And we're just going to, they left us a whole bunch of wire. We'll just cut these off. Strip these both. One. Two. I'll fire up. I buy a good soldering iron. I forgot to turn it on, so we'll let this thing warm up real quick. All right, so I'll take... You need heat shrink big enough to get over two. So I'm gonna take these two. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna take these two. Slide the heat shrink over first. You can't do this after you make a solder joint, so don't forget. Then I'll take one, kind of open it up like a fan. Open it up like a fan. Stick these two together. Hold them. Keep them nice and open. And then grab my main one that I'm going to. Push them through and together and make yourself a really good connection to start. So this is already a decent connection. It's not easy to pull apart. So that's how I start. Normally you want to try and hold this in something. I don't have a vice mount to this bench. It's behind me in this ridiculously tight garage, so I'm not even going to bother. I'll just try and lay it up on here. There we go. Everybody's not going to have that. If I'm like on the go, I always use the power probe torches. These torches are awesome. And I'm going to use this anyway to melt the heat shrink because it has a little open flame. So we'll just let that warm up for a minute over here. On okay. small wire, use nice thin solder. This has got all the flux and shit built into it you're not soldering pipes you don't need anything crazy all right then you just obviously heat up the wire get the torch a little bit hot Okay, make sure you got a nice, if you guys can get a close-up of that. Make sure you got a good 
nice amount of solder all the way through it. Side and the heat shrink up, let it cool for a second. Otherwise, it's just going to melt it halfway up it, and you're going to be really pissed off. And I know from experience. So, all right, get the heat shrink where you want it. I'll just use. You could use a lighter, matches, whatever you got. Then we'll just take this, melt this down. And I forgot the dielectric grease already. That's okay. This side's in the front. Back connections. We'll make sure we do that on. Now you got a nice sealed up tight connection you're not going to rip it apart it's a good way to put two sets of wires into one if you have to you know bridge something off like i am here and that is soldering then i'll take my tape and right, then i'll grab some electrical tape i'm only a fan of 3m i don't really mess with anything else 3m makes really good stretchy good electrical tape that's really sticky and seals really good then i just take the roll put it on here you want a nice, tight, neat wrap around it, uh, which you can't see here. I'll just go over it twice. Take it off. And that's nice and sealed up. It's sealed twice, so you shouldn't have any problems with it. These, I know for a fact, last even in, in salt trucks. I've done it for years like that. Um, that's it on the quick wiring. Now I'll show you how to run it through the frame rails. Uh, so here's the gem I picked up. I should have videoed this last week. We had to make all new mounts for this. As you can see under here, if you can see them, we just made them out of angle iron. Cut them, notched them so they'd fit. Drilled holes, mounted them back to the trailer. Put panning back on it. Shot it all back in with a staple gun. And uh, I just didn't video it because I try and keep this about cars. But you know what? If you're fixing shit, you're probably fixing all kinds of stuff like I am all the time. So, and you might be into jet skis too because it's hot here in the summer. Not always a race weekend. Sometimes it's time to go out on the water and just go beat something up on the water at 50, 60 miles an hour. So if you're unfamiliar with trailers, a four-pin harness works like this. You have a ground, which is your white. Green goes to your right turn signal and brake. Yellow goes to your left turn signal and brake. And then brown, which is now brown and red because I'm running the both sides, but brown is your taillights. If it is a five pin, this is an auxiliary power, which connects right to the brown. Same thing. It's just on with the, with the lights. You see, this is what I don't like. Here's an example of why I solder. All this crap. These T connectors, T locks, Scotch locks, there's a whole bunch of names for them. They're shit. They don't last. I don't care for any of that stuff, especially in a race car. Because you know what? You don't want to be... You know, you say you're, you're running like a Terminator X and you're trying to set up, you know, how much boost you're making on a twin turbo car or something and you're sitting there on a trans brake in a parking lot or something and all of a sudden that connection goes bad and the car takes off. Like because of a connection for that to happen and you crash the car or hurt somebody, like it's stupidity. Take your time with wiring, do it neat. If you're not sure the amperage or something, find out before you run wires. You don't want to burn stuff up. Always make sure you fuse everything. Like I said, we're going to go through this really extensively. We're going to actually start wiring the car. Just don't know when that's going to be because things are getting quite behind uh, the, the projected date here. But here we go. So we're just going to grab these from the back and yank them through. Ooh, which I pulled it too far forward, you jackass. Okay, maybe we're not. Nope, I pulled them, I pulled them by accident, so that's not going to work. So we're going to go see if I have some string and do it from string. All right, basic old, just string you buy from Home Depot, nothing fancy air pressure we'll try and blow it right through all right i'm gonna go a little bit of time so we can keep enough volume of air in here because this compressor is just not ballsy <laughs> there we go. all right that's gonna be a wrap for right now because it's about uh summer rain in florida so we'll finish up tomorrow because it's friday night I'm going out. Later.